thank you all for joining us. This is our uh, latest meetup. This is Create Pipeline, real-time streaming and exactly one semantics with Apache Kafka. Thank you guys so much for joining us here. We're really happy to have you in the MemSQL headquarters. And just a few logistical things before we get started. If anybody wants to connect to our Wi-Fi, our network name is MemSQL Guest, and our password is 5344. And as you can see, there are several placards on tables. If anybody's interested, you can hook up and just use that uh, information right there to get connected. And also, if you're interested, there is a restroom to my left, your right. Um, if you guys need to use that at any point, feel free. So, we're about to get started. This is going to be a great session that's going to be part lecture and part hands-on building session. So, I hope you guys brought your laptops. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to introduce um, Carl and John, two of our, uh, one of our uh, architects and a MemSQL engineer who are going to do a great job. And without any further ado, hand it off to them. Give them a round of applause, guys. Well, thanks so much for coming. We're really excited to get started uh, with our latest meetup. Uh, thanks, Monica, for the introduction. This was great. So what's the goal here? Well, the goal here is for us not to talk too much and for you guys to build some stuff. That's what I think would be most fun. Um, just to get started, as Monica said, my name is Carl. I'm a software engineer at MemSQL. And this is John, a software engineer as well. Uh, and we're part of the applications team at MemSQL. One of the roles we have is building really compelling, amazing experiences on top of the MemSQL database system. Um, and we're going to share it with you guys, something that we built on top of the latest and greatest feature in MemSQL, which is called MemSQL Pipelines. Um, so to get started, uh, just before we get started, actually, I want to ask a couple questions to the audience. So who here uses SQL? Just raise your hand if you use any SQL database, uh, MySQL, Postgres. So lots of everyone, like a ton of people here use SQL. That's super awesome. We're talking about a SQL database. You're in the right place. Um, who uses MemSQL? Anyone use MemSQL on a day-to-day -day basis? So we have some MemSQL engineers. They seem to be using it. Um, but the cool thing about this meetup is by the end of today, all of you guys will have used MemSQL. And that's awesome. So suddenly, like all of you guys can raise your hand. It's great. Um, so last question, who uses Spark or a data sort of like distributed computation framework um, or Kafka? So we got some Kafka, we got some Spark, we got some distribution. Great. Um, so we're going to be talking a lot about Kafka as well as MemSQL in this meetup. And so you know, stay tuned. There's some cool stuff coming. So before we get started with the MemSQL pipelines, um, I want to start with a question. What is MemSQL? It's really important to understand sort of the underpinnings of what makes pipelines so great, which is our MemSQL distributed SQL engine. There are three main sort of areas of MemSQL that I want to talk about really briefly. The first area of MemSQL is that we're a scalable SQL database. So if you're familiar with MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, SQL Server, a lot of our really awesome competitors, um, we are really similar. If you're used to their syntax, you can get up and running with MemSQL really easily. Um, especially if you use MySQL, we actually have followed their syntax very similarly. And so if you already use MySQL, you can pretty much drop MemSQL in place, and it just works. So familiar syntax, scalable SQL database. What makes us scalable, really briefly? Well, we're a distributed system. Uh, we scale out on commodity hardware, which means you can run us in your favorite cloud provider. You can run us on premise. And it generally just works. It's super, super fast, as you can see, really, really fast. Uh, and it's just fun. So without further ado, I want to get into a little bit of the technical details that is, sort of goes behind what makes us such a great database. In MemSQL, we have two roles, like two primary roles in the cluster. So if you think about a collection of Linux machines, we have some aggregators and some leaves. Aggregators are essentially responsible for the metadata level concepts in the cluster. So we're talking about date DDL for people who are familiar with SQL or data definition layer. Um, we're responsible for create table statements, for create pipeline statements, which we're going to get right into. Um, in addition, master aggregators and the child aggregators sort of collectively handle things like failover, high availability, uh, cluster management, and really importantly, query distribution. So when a select query comes in or an insert query comes in, you want to get some data, you want to insert some data, what we do is we take those queries and we shard those queries down onto leaf nodes. So leaf nodes are never connected to your by, or like to directly by your app. Instead, you connect to the aggregators and we shard down those queries to the leaf nodes. And what are the leaf nodes? Well, leaf nodes satisfy a couple really, really powerful uh, features inside the engine. 
One feature is storage. If you have a leaf node, you can store data. If you have more leaf nodes, you can store more data. That's the general concept here. Uh, in addition, it handles query execution. So the more leaf nodes you have, generally the faster your database goes. That's a great property to have in a distributed system. You want to go faster, add more leaf nodes. It generally scales up. Uh, and we see some really amazing workloads that are satisfiable by simply increasing the size of the cluster. Uh, and that's exciting. Uh, finally, you get a sort of natural parallelism. Because we shard these queries to all the leaf nodes, you can sort of take advantage of the fact that by scaling out, you are taking advantage of many, many cores, like real, real solid Linux, like everything you want performance-wise just works. And that's a simple system to get behind. And I'm really excited to always talk about it because I'm a performance geek. Um, so that's the general idea of MemSQL. This meetup is going to be really focused on pipelines. So I just wanted to give you some basic ideas at the MemSQL level. At the end of the meetup, there will be a small amount of time uh, where you guys can come up and ask me questions specifically to MemSQL. But for the rest of this meetup, the talk, I want to really have John focus on MemSQL pipelines. So I'm going to give it up to John, who's going to talk about that now. So pipelines are our solution to real-time streaming. For those of you who are familiar with what an analytics pipeline looks like, you might have your production database possibly going into a Kafka stream or possibly writing to S3 or writing to a Hadoop data lake. You might have a computation framework like Spark or Storm. And then you might have an analytics database farther downstream, such as Redshift, for example. And you might have some BI tools that are hitting this analytics database. So pipelines are our attempt at taking a step back and solving the core problem, which is how do you um, easily and robustly and scalably create this sort of streaming analytics workload end-to-end. -end. And we are able to leverage some unique properties of our existing system. For example, since MemSQL is already an ACID-compliant SQL database, we get things like exactly one semantics out of the box. Every, t every micro batch that you're streaming through your system happens within a transaction. So you're not going to duplicate uh, batches, and you're, and you're not going to drop batches. Uh, you also have your, th these pipelines, these streaming workloads, are automatically distributed using exactly the same underlying machinery that we use to distribute our tables and, and, and our database. They're just automatically sharded across your entire cluster. And finally, for those of you who have made these sort of analytics workloads, there's always going to be some sort of computation step, whether it's Spark or any of, of those of, or any similar frameworks. We've, we offer the ability to perform this computation, this transformation, uh, written in whatever language you want, using whatever framework or whatever libraries you want. And we'll explain in more detail how that works. Whoops. So this is how you create a pipeline. Or this is one of the ways that you create a pipeline. You'll notice that it is very similar to a create table statement. Uh, and you can also alter a pipeline and drop a pipeline. The fact is that pipelines exist as uh, first-class entities within our database engine. And underneath this create pipeline line is a, is a load data statement that is familiar to anyone who's used a SQL database, except instead of loading data from a file, you're loading data from Kafka, specifically from this uh, host name and the tweets topic. And then the destination of this uh, stream is the tweets table. So in this three lines of SQL, you can declaratively describe the source of your stream and the sync of your stream, and everything related to managing it is automatically handled by the MemSQL engine. This is uh, just sort of a diagram of how it works. Kafka, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is a distributed message queue. When you're building analytics pipelines, you very commonly have lots of bits of production code that are emitting events, or emitting clicks, or emitting sensor data. And they all have to get aggregated in some sort of buffer somewhere for, for whatever part of your analytic system is consuming them. Kafka is uh, one of those very commonly used and is one that we support. So you have all different parts of your, of your production system emitting events. They arrive in Kafka, uh, uh, maybe a few days' worth of buffer. And when you create your pipeline in MemSQL, it automatically uh, streams data in. Now, Kafka is a distributed system. You have data sharded across your entire cluster. MemSQL is also a distributed system. You have data sharded across your entire um, set of leaf nodes. So when you create this Kafka consumer, it happens in parallel automatically. Now, this is sufficient if you have data in Kafka and you just want to load it straight into a table. 
if you additionally want to run some sort of transform or, or MapReduce or RDD-like operation on it, then you can have a transform. And the transform is just a binary or just a program. You can write it in whatever language you want. All it does is it reads records from standard in and it writes records to standard out, which means that you can write it as a Python script, you can write it as, as a bash script, you can write it as, as a C program if you want you know, amazing performance. You can do any sort of machine learning or data science work. You can even hit an external server if you want to. So every record that gets received from Kafka passes through this transform and is loaded into the leaf. And all this happens automatically in parallel. You create the code of this transform, and MemSQL takes care of automatically deploying it for you across this entire cluster. Um, now Carl is going to talk about the specific pipelines that we're going to make for this demo and that you are also going to make for this demo, which is a sort of representative example of what, a, and what, what one of these analytics pipelines might look like. Cool. Thanks, John. So <clears throat> what we've done is we've built up a little bit of interesting technology for you guys to use today. Um, there's, of course, MemSQL pipelines, which is inside the MemSQL database engine. And that is basically generally released. Like, you can go home today, download the free version of our software, and play with it to your heart's content. So there's nothing in this demo that you can't do yourself. There's nothing special. We haven't created a special build. It's just completely out of the box, which is really fun. Um, we're going to build two pipelines in this demo. The first pipeline is demonstrating sort of the simple case. The simple case is you have some data in some Kafka queue or some external system, and you just want to stream it directly into a MemSQL table. The data set that we're using is Twitter. Twitter has a great set of interesting uh, data to look at. It, it's full of uh, tweets. It's full of people talking about hilarious things, some, sometimes not hilarious or, or like want things you want to read. But there are some interesting data sort of uh, graph type theory we can do on top of the Twitter data set. And so the first pipeline we're creating is essentially very simple. We have a bunch of tweets which we loaded into Kafka. And we basically have a table called tweets. And we have a simple pipeline which just streams them directly in. Uh, the table, for people who are familiar with SQL, looks a little bit like this. We have one column for each sort of field in the tweet, basically. Um, so that's the interesting thing there. One thing I want to point out is that the key here, which is the shard key here, is using clustered column store, which is our column, columnar-based data structure. Um, so essentially, it stores data on disk in a really efficient format that allows for extremely fast analytical type queries. And so we're going to use that later in some really cool uh, example queries that we have for you guys to run. The next pipeline we're going to create is the graph pipeline. So we are trying to think about something cool you can do with the Twitter data set. And one thing we came up with is that a bunch of tweets, very commonly, actually it turns out that about two thirds of all tweets reference other users um, on Twitter. Now, this actually sort of forms a very lightweight graph. Uh, we have a tweet. We have a user A who's emitted a tweet. And that tweet references one, one or more other nodes in the system. And with this graph, we can create very, very cool uh, queries that can sort of compute things like who is the most influential person on Twitter in this set of time that we've scanned Twitter, um, something like that. So that's what we're actually going to do today uh, in, your little, uh, in your workshop, which is going to be like a relatively simple example of, of something you can do in MemSQL. Um, so how does this work? It's really simple. We have the same topic. So essentially, we're streaming the exact same data set. But instead of just emitting it directly into MemSQL, we, what we have is a transform, which is written in Python. And the transform is very, very simple. It looks at the tweet body. It grabs all of the referenced usernames. And it emits a set of tuples of author to reference um, as the transform goes along through all the tweets. So relatively simple. I want to point out something really cool. Uh, so here's the table, actually, really quick. So we have the tweet ID that the, this, this link was connected to. And then we also have the username and the ref username. Um, so this is just a standard sort of graph edge table that you'd see in a lot of type of uh, data science. So before we get started, I just want to mention one thing, which is that the, or actually, no, never mind. We're just going to get started. <laughs> I was like, we should just talk about it as we go. So this is going to be what you guys are going to do. Um, so we're going to go through it. And then we're going to have engineers in the audience descend upon you and help you guys go through it on your own computers. Uh, for people who have Docker installed locally, uh, you will be able to run it on your computer. 
For people who do not, it is absolutely not required. We have a bunch of Amazon instances which we've spun up, which we can give out uh, as needed. And you guys will be able to basically run this entire demo on like a single Amazon instance, uh, just to sort of get a feeling of how this works. Um, one thing to note is that we are not going for performance here. We're going for showing off pipelines, showing off the ease of use. And so the volume of data we're looking at is like 6K per second, which in MemSQL terms is trivially tiny. Um, we're usually working in like the millions per second. But this really shows off the simplicity of Twitter uh, or this, this pipeline. And it is something you can actually run on your computer without stressing it too much. Um, so cool. Without, getting, without further ado, let's get started. So this is the MemSQL Ops uh, user interface. MemSQL Ops is a tool that we ship with the MemSQL database engine. And MemSQL Ops provides a bunch of interesting user experiences on top of MemSQL. One of those experiences is MemSQL pipelines. So essentially, we have MemSQL pipelines in the engine, which is a bunch of DDL. But also, we have MemSQL pipelines in Ops, which is a full graphical UI for managing, creating, managing, monitoring, and deleting pipelines, um, starting and stopping them. You can pretty much do everything you can do in the CLI through the UI. So let's go ahead and get started. So John is going to go ahead and create pipeline. We're going to create the first pipeline. So this pipeline is just emitting, it's streaming directly from Kafka into a table. There's nothing sort of fancy going on. Um, the first field it asks for is essentially the name of the pipeline. That's for your own reference. The next thing you do is you're going to specify where to connect to. What we have is a Kafka server, which we have running for you guys. And this Kafka server already contains this Twitter data set. Um, and it's currently streaming uh, at around, I think we looked at it, it's like 6 to 10K per second um, in this stream. So as soon as you connect to it, you're immediately going to get brand new data from this pipeline. Um, the next thing we're going to do is specify the topic for tweets. And we're going to use the same topic for both pipelines. So that's pretty easy. And we don't have to worry about the offsets thing. We can explain that a little bit later. So we can skip the transform section on this pipeline because we, the next pipeline has the transform. So we'll skip that. And then we need to select where is the data going. Um, so this is how easy it is. You basically need to pick a database and a table that already exists in, your, in MemSQL. And we're just going to go ahead and load directly into that database and table. Um, in this demo, we already created the database and table. So here's that, that schema I showed you guys earlier. Uh, in your own, during the workshop, you're going to need to create that yourself on the MemSQL cluster. We will provide you all the resources you need and all the assets you need to be successful. And there will be engineers here to help you. So don't worry about that. But just uh, remember that you're going to need to create this at some point. Um, so all of the default configuration just works out of the box with this demo. You don't have to worry about configuring anything. So we can go ahead and click Next. Um, so what we're going to do here is interesting. We're going to hit Test Pipeline. We built a UI system that allows you to, without touching your database, perform like a dry run of a pipeline. This is amazing for iterating. If you have some complex uh, transform, do you have a question? Or Oh, no, <laughs> just checking. Um, if you have a complex transform that may be performing network requests or whatnot, it's really helpful to be able to kick off a quick test to see what's going on. Um, so while you guys are playing around, if you start modifying the transform, I recommend you guys to try this. And you might see like sta you know, stack traces or whatever from your transform if, if one exists. Um, so we can see this one totally worked. We got some Twitter data right away. And, uh, and we can see a bunch of tweets. Uh, usually it's dangerous to look at that for too long. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit Create Pipeline. And that will go ahead and just start in the background. While that's being created and is spinning up and streaming some data, let's go ahead and create the second pipeline. So the second pipeline is going to be this, this edges table. So essentially, it's a set of tuples, as I said before, from username to reference username. Um, so we're going to name this tweet links pipeline. And then we're going to specify the exact same Kafka broker and topic that we did before. Um, so we're just going to do that. Now, here's something different. What we're going to do is we're going to select a transform file from John's computer. So this is how easy it is. He has a Python file locally, selects that Python file in the dropdown, and boom, it just uploads directly to MemSQL Ops. MemSQL Ops will deal with the complexity of making sure that that transform file is available to MemSQL. And MemSQL will actually distribute that, that binary to all the nodes in your system. Um, so there's no, no crazy complexity. You don't have to worry about like compiling jars and loading them in Spark and distributing them. None of that stuff. We just upload, and you're done. Um, so we're going to select the other table, tweet links. Uh, we can look at the schema. It's this sort of three-column schema that we talked about. And all of these settings are, again, correct, sort of as we need for this, uh, for this demo. So go ahead and continue. And then we're going to test pipeline. So this is awesome. This is the moment of truth right here. We are running in real time this transform on top of the Twitter stream. And there's a bunch of tweets that, that someone sent to someone else. So uh, Ruth Diana sent a tweet to Vincent22 or Vicent or something. Anyways, um, so that's how easy it is. So we, got, we extracted a couple tuples. It looks like it works. We'll hit Create Pipeline. 
so at this point, we have two pipelines in MemSQL. And the ops UI is showing those to us on this pipelines view. The pipelines view is there to look at pipelines which have fallen behind and just to get an idea of which pipelines are available in your system and which ones are running and which ones are not running. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's a little hard to sort of understand these graphs from very little time, but the general gist of it is that very little green in the top part means that you're keeping up. Um, so I won't go too much into detail, but that's the general idea. Uh, so we're good. We can look at one of the pipelines. So this is the tweets pipeline, and we can see that batches are running right here on the screen. And each batch is taking 400-ish milliseconds, so it's super fast. And as we can see, we see that Twitter volume we talked about, which is about 6K per second. Um, and it looks like there's no errors, so I'm pretty happy with this. Let's go ahead and look at the Twitter links pipeline. And we can see something interesting here, what I want to point out, which is that each of our batches are essentially filtering. So we can see that in these batches, we're you know, extracting about 5,000 tweets or 6,000 tweets, and we're only actually loading about 4,000 tweets. And that's because you know, not all tweets reference someone else. So the cool thing about our transforms is that it's not just simple mapping. It's not just like take a tweet and transform it to some other thing. We actually have the ability to filter. We have the ability to reduce. We have the ability to map. We have the ability to expand. Uh, if you have a tweet in here that emits like references 10 other people. We're going to emit 10 records in that transform. And that's really exciting. You can do some really cool data science-y type stuff using this data structure, using this technology. And that's what you guys are going to do today. Um, so while we have this up, does anyone have any brief questions about this? Um, we are going to have engineers available. So you'll have tons of hands, one-on-one -on -one time with engineers to talk about how to do this, to build this yourself. Um, but if anyone has questions while I have this up, I'm all ears. Show an error? Show an error? Uh, we can when you're doing your workshop. Uh, it's very easy to inject errors by just like typing random stuff in the transform. Um, but right now, we've just made this so good that there's no errors. Um, so great question. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, yeah, actually, we can. Do you want to open up the Python file really quick? So we can just look at it as a group before you guys do it on your own. And I actually really encourage you guys to play around with this file, because you can do other things. Maybe you want to extract hashtags. It's really easy. It's one character change, and you extract hashtags. Um, so here's the Python file. Ta-da. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this. So the prequel, we have this transform records thing. Um, for those who are, who are familiar with byte length encoding, the input to the transform binary is essentially just like byte length encoded records. So you read a couple, you read a byte, or you read a little bit, you say, OK, I'm going to read x bytes from the stream. And so that's what this function just handles for you. You don't have to worry about that. Um, down here is where the actual transformation, I'm going to try to stand out of the way as much as I can. I'll sit over here. Um, the transformation is essentially saying, for line in inputting incoming records, uh, we want to grab the username and body and the ID from the, twi the, the incoming record. So in our, our actual Kafka stream, we've already normalized the tweets out to essentially TSV, um, just to keep things simple. So essentially, all we have to do is just split the tweet on slash T. It's really easy. Then what we do is we go ahead and iterate through this regex, um, which essentially extracts at username. right? And then for each one of those extractions, we just write out a record. And the cool thing is, is that the entire transform system is built around standard in and standard out. Um, any programming language supports standard in and standard out. It's really easy to integrate with. You don't have to do any complex uh, API or interfaces or import libraries. Um, so we're hoping that this system allows people to be very creative and very, like, it makes things really easy to get started. So I hope that answers your question. And you'll have time to play around with it very shortly. Yes. Um, also, on, on the topic of errors, if this uh, transform returns a, a non zero exit code, you'll see it in the UI as an error, and you can debug it, see a stack trace, et cetera. Yeah. And we'll like pull out stack traces for you and all this type of stuff. Um, neat. So let's go ahead and go back to the slides. Do, do, do. Slides. slides are there. Yeah. OK. So uh, yeah, I think that's. So yeah, so thanks. Um, we've already gone over that. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, let's, we didn't look at the data. Let's do that. Sorry. We just got distracted. Too many questions. OK. Uh, so we have some tables. Let's go ahead and make the font bigger. And also, yeah. I'm going to get out of the way, because you're not going to see anything. Uh, it's right behind you. Um, OK. So, so yes, tables and pipelines are both objects you can look at. Um, some example queries you can run include, we have a bunch of them in the readme for you to play with. This will return the top 10 most prolific users. Um, we have one that will return the top 10 most retweeted tweets. 
uh, which is almost entirely um, One Direction and Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, this, this, uh, this data set is from 2014, by the way. Um, and we have, we have other more, more uh, uh, complex ones, like this one, which will run through uh, basically every, every uh, pair of weird, uh, this will basically return all of the pairs of people who have the longest running conversations. So Honey Ponies and Mating have talked to each other twice. And if, if two uh, handles have long conversations, they'll get ranked higher. So some different examples of, of analytics queries you can run that, that either use the tweets data directly or join it together with the uh, tweet links graph representation. Cool. All right, we're right on time uh, to start the meetup, or the, the workshop. So just to go back to the slides, um, so basically here's how this is going to work. It's going to be really simple. First of all, grab your computers, bring them out, connect to the Wi-Fi, get all set up. Um, for people who want to learn how to run this entirely on your computer inside Docker, the engineers here know how to do that and will be able to help you. For those who don't, we have Amazon instances that you can connect to and use. Uh, one thing you will need to do is install some form of a MySQL client. If you go with that option, um, we can help you with that on your computers as needed. Uh, the next thing to note is that once you have internet access, you can open up the GitHub URL here, uh, which will basically give you access to the README, gives you access to the transform, gets you started, and it actually has like step-by-step -step guidelines. Um, also, for people who use clusters that we spin up for you, go to this quick, tiny URL, and we will uh, put information there about the clusters that you guys can use. And we're going to try to do it like one, one person to one cluster, uh, or like a pair or something. So make sure that you only use the cluster that's tagged as your name. And don't use someone else's cluster.